Hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry, and it's time for some more Baldur's Gate 3 single player this time. I know, right? It's been a little while. But hey, what am I doing here? First off, I am selling loot. Ah, oh, that was a bit juddery. And then, I should probably go look in the Owlbear's cave again, which I don't really want to do yet. Now, I believe I have a... Before, oh, here we go. A woman with shadows for eyes, you said. Merely that if the eyes are the mirror to the soul, yours have dark curtains across the mirror. No offence taken, I hope. Not necessarily. I haven't made up my mind about you yet. She sounded somewhat reluctant when she asked him what he meant by a woman with shadows for eyes. Uh, so yeah, I am of the understanding that we have a number of uh, potions and scrolls of things like animal friendship. Or speak to animals. I should organize these and prepare to use them. Ah, uh, 14, 14, 14, okay, right. Um, now, I'm not at my best theory crafting at the moment because I've had a nice long line. Uh, it's quite early in the morning at this point. It's about 7 in the morning. And I probably, um, you know, I, I got out of bed like 5 or 10 minutes ago, you know. But I'm going to try and have fun anyway, right? So, um, scroll of animal friendship. I'm looking for potions and scrolls that might have something to do with this here. Uh, potion of animal speaking. So if I pop that up there, I might even have something else as well. Send those to Lazelle, obviously. Um, so, so. No, I think it's just those two. Ah, yeah. We have these two as well. Um, right. Chance to snare target if it is not a plant or beast. So that's with a physical hit. Um, unhampered resistance. If a wielder is attacked while not wearing armor, they receive a d4 bonus to saving throws. That's probably good. Attacks shouldn't always result in saving throws. Also, I still have this shaft of a broken spear. Um... It could be rubbish, but the fact that I've still held on to it means might as well um, keep it in case I can find the spearhead. Now, I must admit I'm being a little selfish here, right? Um, I've left the Albert for game for a while, and I've had to stop watching two other early access Let's Plays because the Let's Players and both of them went straight into the Albert Cave as soon as they came near it and I was like, okay, okay, and they're not just messing around at the entrance, they're actually going and interacting with it, I better stop watching that. Oh, this is interesting. We've got actual encumbrance for once. Let's go say hello to this little podder. Hmm. 
and then see how much encumbrance I can shift. Oh, a bit of mucus there, sorry. Need anything else? Uh, let's of see. Of course, but please, remember, you're not the only one in need. I bet you the animals don't care. The owl bear doesn't count as animal, but count as some kind of other beast. Just to be awkward. Right. I'm not going to burden him with things... He doesn't want or need, right? Um, so, weapons and armor will still go to the smith. Hmm. Three potions of hill giant strength. Oh, that's, that's got to be... Um, well, we'll see. Um... Yeah, look, this thing's heavy. I, I shouldn't. We've dealt with Auntie Ethel, so we can't offload it onto her. Um, right. What else? Um, that's probably about it for this merchant. So we have a nice staff here. Uh, we got one, two magic items, no magic items, one. I'm looking purely at equipment here. And one, two. Okay, so Lazel, if we get a magic item, she gets first dibs, you know. Sylvanas be with you. And with you, my friend. He's a fairly decent person. Let's see, what else do I want to do? Oh yeah. Um there is something else. I can put off going to see the bug bears for a little bit longer. There are other options available to me. Looking for steel? I have, well, something close. Let's take a look and see. Um, ooh, the nice 200 hammer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Could we get Lazelle a shield and one-handed sword? Um, Preferably a magical one. You know, then she could really get ignored by monsters. So, not the best idea. <laughs> the AI at the moment has some targeting issues. It over focuses on vulnerable characters. Focusing on vulnerable characters is fine, but it does it to the point where it's actually provoking attacks of opportunity and getting itself killed just to try and reach the most vulnerable ones. And yes, that can probably be exploited. Uh, this is nice. Uh, it would be a slight armor upgrade. But in terms of encumbrance, she can't really keep lugging it around. So there we go. Um, that would take us up to not quite enough for some of these, but that's okay, right? There we go. But I have been wanting to go see the owlbears for quite some time, so I should go and find out what kind of creatures they are. I mean, they're not really animals. They're uh, basically vivisectionist nightmare stuff. Um, Basically, you know, even even back in the old purple box before red box existed, the uh, you know, and before the monster manual was like a separate book when it was just like part of the same volume. Uh, the, the the entry for the Albert said it was a mad wizard's invention and not a natural development, and it was just a bear with an owl's head, you know. And subsequent designs have allowed for... Oh, no, no, 
have have added more feathers to like the forelegs and um, occasionally like barn owl. It's not barn owl. I mean that's common owl. Prowess in battle is remarkable, as is your battle stance itself. Rathajak, a technique known to few outside Kalir. Shall I teach you? So I'll that's pass. a completely silent K. I prefer abjuration over acrobatics. Ah, oh, so maybe I should have gone with abjuration specialization for him after all. Of course, what we all want is the divination specialization. Yes, give me a proper diviner. Now that'll make a party fun. Right, so, uh, what was I saying? Yeah. Uh, what's the one with the, the long sort of ear feathers that stick up over the eyes? A few people do that because they think it makes the elbow look interesting. The one we've seen here has, like, practically got wings on its forelegs and shoulders. Um, I've seen a few with kind of wing feathers on the forelegs, but nowhere near as extreme as these. What if this crash doesn't work out later? What if your kin fail you? If I can reach the crash, my kin will provide. Any failure will be mine alone. If you say so. Just don't expect me to put all my eggs in the same basket. That expression must sound curious for Gith Yankee here, given the way they're birthed. Yeah, I was thinking. And we got a free party member banter. Great. Uh, so it, it strikes me that if Lazel reaches the Gith Yankee crash and they are unable to help her in removing the tadpole, she should be devastated. I mean, I doubt she's going to just say, well, all right, I've got to kill myself now then. I mean, she might. She may demand we keep looking for other ways. So, there is an issue, right, that I have with this current storyline. Mind flares are rare and come from another dimension, right? And ceramorphosis is a little-known process that... While first documented about, ooh, you know, 21, 22 years ago, not a lot of people knew about it until a year or two ago when Larian put out the first um, trailers for the game. However, and this is where we get to the real sort of fun stuff. Virtually every NPC we've come across so far in the game knows about Mind Flares and knows about Ceramorphosis as if it's a very normal thing that has been happening in this region for quite some time. And given the average level of intelligence of the NPCs we've come across, that's intriguing, as the Mind Flares tend to go for more intelligent victims. Because a highly intelligent mind is more susceptible to ceramorphosis because they want to be intelligent mind flares. And it's, so it's also like an arrogance thing as well. Right, let's go see what kind of beast we're dealing with here. I bet it'll be like monstrosity or something. It is distressed. Monstrosity. So, not animal. Uh, the Albert has sustained damage to its eye. It cannot make critical hits and has disadvantage on perception checks. Well, okay, but I mean. Let's try... I forgot to change party members. Maybe that's for the best. Take your... It's no longer distressed. Which may or may not be a good thing. Take your... Right. 
Um, hello. You feel the quake of its heavy footsteps before you see it. An owl bear, its beaked face looming out of the darkness. Wait for it. Have you hugged an owlbear today? Has an owlbear hugged you? Have you felt its beak and its soft feathered arms rip your body in two? <laughs> Love that song. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go animal handling. Um. Yeah, let, watch me totally fail this. So I'll study the owlbear's behaviour. Oh! You never know, then. Aha! Uh -huh. The owlbear's one good eye flicks away for a moment. You follow its glance and see an owlbear cub. Okay, so it's... Move towards the cub is clearly not the best choice here. Back away slowly. <coughs> Might end the conversation, so I'll just, you know, hands up. I don't want to hurt you. Just steady on. The owlbear stares, then sharply inhales your scent. It sits back, its eye still fixed on you. A silent ultimatum. You can leave now. Or step closer and die. All right, well, oh, part of me really wants to go say hello. Um, I want to help it, and I'm not sure how best to do so. Would attempting to start a conversation involve stepping closer and antagonize the creature? Quite probably. Let's see. Yep, it did. Uh, okay, okay, I don't like that. Um, damn, I did so well. You know what? Yeah, that's not what I... That was a test. I should have saved that. Oh, bugger. Seriously? Didn't auto save anywhere in the cave. Lovely. Which does mean I can at least do this properly. Means I gotta go sell everything again. Oh, joy. It also means that all those speak to animal and animal friendship things aren't particularly gonna be helpful either, which is a shame. Um. I wonder what would help. Don't rightly know. But at least I remembered that I wanted to switch up the party, get Will back in the party again, get Shadowheart out the party, and when she's gone I can play with her little box that she keeps leaving in my pockets. She shouldn't, but she does. Hmm. And here we have the joy of waiting for the bridge to finish loading in, waiting for the boar to fall over, and some, some boulders here to actually appear. Yeah. Um, patches, patches. I would anticipate a patch next week on Tuesday, based on the current uh, patch release pattern. Um, you know, they released the game on a Tuesday, did some hot fixes, which we can ignore because they're not real patches. A week after, on a Tuesday, they did another patch. Two weeks later, on Tuesday, they did another patch. And it's about a week and a half after that. A woman with shadows for eyes, you said. Merely that if the eyes are the mirror to the soul, yours have dark curtains across the mirror. No offense taken, I hope. Not necessarily. I haven't made up my mind about you yet. Okay, she's either really indecisive or stupid or just... I mean, she's not good at forming first impressions. She gets like analysis paralysis or something, you know. 
let's offload some junk. Need anything else? Sure. Of course. But please, remember, you're not the only one in need. Ah, let's give away this, and this. Yeah, all of them, why not? Uh, there doesn't seem to be a major crafting system in the game yet. Now that's just heavy, that had to go. Um, what else can we offload? Um, Now she's going to be going slow. Actually, you know what? Um, I should make use of these, and I haven't been doing it enough. But I could seriously offload the lot here and free up some pack space. Sylvanus be with you. <coughs> oh dear. Huh? So we know the Albear mummy is not very friendly. She is definitely a V kill you every time you want to get reincarnated until you get back to some sort of playable race variety. As per the song. So there isn't some way in conversation to heal her eye and make her friendly again, even though healing her steal. actually removed the condition. I have, well, something close. Right. Okay. Aha, I can put this one here, and then I don't have like three and four and an odd. the bows much more tidy. And then we have these evil red cap farming implements of doom which are apparently really lethal even though they're just not. 2d4 slashing damage for a light one-handed weapon is ridiculous. It's just insane. Especially as it's just not that deadly. And then we can give away these as well. Um... Oh, where did... Where's the broken spear shaft? There it is, all the way down there suddenly, somehow. Okay. And since the shops only seem to change when we level, we're stuck with this selection, which doesn't give us a lot of options, really. I mean, that'd be nice, though, you know. Actually, that's nice and cheap. Ooh, give those all the two-handed hammer. She could go in going, you can't touch this. I can touch you, you monster. Right, let's not, let's not. Let's let's hold off and see what else we can find, like the Dark Elf boots. But for now, we are sending Shadowheart back to camp, where she belongs. And we're taking Will, because he wants us to deal with the goblins in the area. Um, that doesn't mean that we're gonna go deal with the goblins straight away. Oh, yeah, speaking of the goblins, uh, the last multiplayer session, uh, the second part of the session, the recording corrupted, and so we lost about an hour and a half to two hours of gameplay. So when we start the next one, we'll just do a quick chat to cover, like, hey, yeah, we, we had some fights with some goblins. It was quite impressive. We took their stuff. We killed some monsters. Uh, some ogres. Yeah, let's go deal with those ogres now. After we have rested and changed party members. Yeah. 
Here we go. Yeah, you keep playing with something your box that I'm holding, but you're not holding. There's something very wrong with this box. Uh, just, just stay here for a bit for now, because I'm not making any inroads on her conversations at all whatsoever. Look, if you're sure. Underneath the blatantly hostile Fine. exterior, she might I'll be a be perfectly here nice person. You rediscover your taste in company. You know, yeah, you know, underneath the extremely hostile exterior, she might be a very nice person. She probably isn't, but there's got to be more depth to her. She's she's clearly hiding everything, you know. Well met. Hey, come with me, would you? Ah, that's the spirit. I have a problem with Will. I have a problem with Will in that on one of the websites, I think one of the official websites, possibly, even it says he's a nobleman. And I'm like, so far his accent has been very street, very urban, but slightly put on as if there's a bit of refinement behind it. So he could be just trying to act cool and be hip with the kids and like, yeah, I've got street cred. I talk like a... Oh God, another backwards impossible belt buckle. Please, Larian, fix these belt buckles. They do not... Just, just wear a belt. Look at any belt buckle. Look at a belt. It is obvious how they work. They do not work like this. All you're going to do there is have the belt spring open all the time. You need the tang to be going opposite to it. It's flipping obvious! You know. Use your loaf, mate. Right, my god. Oh. Okay, new spell. Yeah, that seems like a thematic one. Uh, replacement spell. Well, what would we replace? Uh, we got Armor of Agathis... Arms of Hadar and Hex, they're all good. And it always takes the highest level spell available if possible. Scorching Ray would be nice. Um, what would we. Misty Step is a good one. So, I haven't really used Arms of Hadar very much. I probably should. Um, so, all targets random and take damage. Uh, that is action, that is bonus action. So in theory you could jump into the middle of a group of enemies and set that off. And then be very vulnerable indeed. Right, so what have we got here that's... I mean, Shatter is nice. Um, mm. uh, mirror image might be good. Scorching Ray might be good. I think I'll hold off for... Ooh, hold person as an option, okay. No, 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 I'm fine with those. Right, ability improvement or something else. Well, let's take a look. What do we fancy? Um, increase strength or dexterity by one. Do I get a, to pick an option for that? Um, let's see. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, defensive duelist. He does get a lot of melee attacks and ranged attacks. Um, so that's good. Dual wielder, hell no, we're not an idiot. Uh, Grim Master, light, lightly armoured. Um, he already has light armor proficiency, so this would just be a way to medium armoured. What does heavy armor require? Like medium armor efficiency, yeah. So, which he apparently can't take at all. That's an option. Mobile. Um, we use the dash action, dash action, difficult trains and slow you down. Moreover, okay. Oh! Moreover, if you move after making a melee attack, you don't provoke an attack of opportunity from your target. That would be very good for a rogue. Uh, uh, some more spells from another class, or the same class. Moderately armoured, that's medium armour apparently. Uh, skills... proficiency is good. Um... I'm liking the defensive duelist, to be honest, because he, he likes to kind of fancy himself as the sort of action hero. So yeah, there we go. Let's rest.
So, the problem with Will is that he doesn't sound like he's a nobleman at all. Although he sounds a little bit too posh to, for his... I see you, Gale, don't worry, we're just getting outside first. Seems a little too posh for his um, urban uh, accent to be believable. You strike me as cleverer than most Istiki Gale. Multiple tutors, I should guess. Many a wise man and woman indeed. Waterdeep is the home of myriad scholars. Oh, ah, no, not the city of splendors. <laughs> Spent a whole fleet's week there swilling blue wine. <laughs> it's easy to forget how many annoying word names there are in Forgotten Realms. Right, you wanted to talk to me. Where did it go? Where did it go? Do I have to go back here to get that exclamation mark again? Gail, you wanted to talk to me, but then you insist on talking to the others. Why did it go away? It's confusing. Well, let's just try anyway and see if it works. Go ahead. I'm listening. You're not Fraser Crane. Um. You know, I, no, he's asked me not to ask. I'll hold off for now. Okay, whatever it was, apparently it wasn't that important. And he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Right. Well, let's go live dangerously. Prowess in battle is remarkable, as is your battle style. Okay, we're getting itself. a bit of repetition here. Parathajak, a technique known to few outside Kalir. Shall I teach you? I'll pass, thank you. I prefer abjuration over acrobatics. Right. Why did she offer to teach him? That's an interesting point. Um, was it a genuine offer or was it more like an insult? Like, oh yeah, should I, should I try to teach you to do something you clearly aren't capable of doing? Yeah, like a put down. Um, Knowing her, I'd suggest it is a put-down. But hey, we've got something really important to do here. We have a building. Uh, let's go play with the ogres first. Right. And I'm going to regret this, but here we go. Tastes like chicken. No chicken. Tastes like fish. How can the eye for? Gentlemen, contain yourselves. This quarrel sours our feast. Besides, tastes like pork. And what surprise is this? Brothers, look here. I have eyed yet another prize. Fortune favors our bellies. Stranger, be you friend or food. The mark is her measure. Show is the brand of the absolute. So these three remind me a little bit of William, Bert and Tom, the three trolls from The Hobbit. Um, you know, you're, you're fairly well spoken for an ogre. Am I not? Astonishing. A robust diet makes for a shrewd mind, you see. I am a gourmand. And you, a delicacy. Unless you bear the mark, of course. So there's something ever so slightly off about his speech, right? Occasionally, he doesn't quite get the emphasis right on certain words and doesn't get the most um, sort of dramatic or beautiful impact out of them. And yet, I think that could be intentional. It's like, he says, am I not astonishing? Well, he just he didn't have enough emphasis on astonishing. Um, so I, I don't have that kind of mark. Food? Food. Food. And that point I just brought up will be important. And oh, here come the ogres. Uh, he just threw a chair at Gale. That's not on. 
Okay, Gale, we got a number of options here. Ah, uh, can you magic missile the fuck out of shock? Wait, he's not the one we want, is it? Uh, Lump the Enlightened is an issue. Sure. Why not? And rely on the corner a bit. <laughs> Sorry! <coughs> rely on the corner a little for cover. And <coughs> <coughs> oh dear. What a morning. Oh, that's a shame. Okay. That hurts a lot. Will, can you do something nice here? Or anything fancy? Oh, that wasn't very good. Okay. Lazel, your skills are needed. Please apply violence to this big dumb brute. Good start. I could see Jaria going down here, this is an issue. It's all down to Fank. Okay, that's great. Um, right, can you come out here? Because obviously we want to set up a burning hand on but can we get a... no we can't, okay. That is not ideal. Alright. Um, guess what? You know, mirror image does nothing to stop magic missiles. Hold on, is it? Are these going into him? Literally how? I didn't see a step before that jump. How? Okay, f I'll just walk then. You know, if you're going to be like that. Uh, nasty, horrible monsters. Okay, better than nothing. Gail, have you got any movement left? Because you're going to need it, pal. Nope. Okay. Laser, we need you to... Oh, sod it. Aha! I'm liking this idea. I could almost colour spray, but it's not quite worth it. Right. Laser. Perfect. Can you lay into this one? You can, you say? Why? Excellent! Let's try... No! Let's try doing it again! That is not the button I wanted to click. Not when she's on full health, anyway. Oh, that's rubbish. Okay, fine. And now we should start singing about the danger zone. Uh-oh. That wasn't a chair. Uh, Gale, could you get, like, down here? And is he gonna belt you one? No, he's not. Great! Great, great, great. Um... 56, 56... Uh, we need to get better attack modifiers. Um... We also need more crowd control spells. Um... Oh, hello. Is that current or total? Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I should hold off that for acid splash. Okay, okay, okay. Um, what else does he have prepared that might not be hotkeyed? Um, 
level two witch bolt. Oh, that's nice, right? But it's a problem if we can't hit. So, you are the wrong ogre. Okay. However, now that we are here, if we had like burning hands or something, um, that would be nice. Can we get a straight line? Awesome, we can. Torment. Better than nothing. Right, and speaking of lines, um, I mean, look, the chances are low, but not that low. Hey, hey, hey. just in case we can get rid of an image. Damn it, not enough damage. We tried. Let's get off the boulder. Oh, we're out of... That's interesting. Okay. That's not good, is it? Hit him. That's not good either. Oh, it's a reaction! Will, use your reaction. They, they need to fix these reactions, because, I mean, the attacks of opportunity never work for party members. Well, they almost never work. Okay, there it is. Finally. I saw it appearing and disappearing there, but it wasn't doing the circle there. Okay, people. Can we get that great big cleave in here now? We can, you say. Excellent. And an image down. Let's loot a pig's head and some money. And heal... And then if we could move to... Look, this roof beam is really inconvenient. I need to move to engage the second ogre. But it won't let me because this bloody corpse is in the way. I need to go here. Can I... No. Wait, 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 wait. Um, there we go. That wasn't leaving! You wally. Okay, that was a lot of acid. Gale, you're extremely lucky and I don't know why. Really now? That's what he thought was his best option? Well, hey, you know, I, I won't complain. Uh... Hmm. I'm keeping that second level slot for a prayer of healing for the party after the fight. Um. Wait, this is level one. That's not ideal. Okay, he'll probably pass this save, but we get to roll it. Will, my man. That's not good odds. How's this? Better? Better. Alright, and could you move round to there, please? That'd be great. Lizelle! Um, let's get active. Where the... I don't know what his combat reach is, but it's pathetic. And why did she think she had to go all the way there to... I mean, obviously she can't leap through his bulk, but... It would be amusing if she could. Uh, nice. 
Not so eloquent now, is he? He hasn't said a word yet since we come up gun. That might be worth a look. What might? What what this um crack support beam? A bit late now, I think. Uh one, two, all three. The odds of getting a 14 or 15 were pretty slim, but it worked out nicely. Okay, let's move to here. Uh, giving him a straight line is bad in case he can knock her back into her, but we can do a little burny burny fire. Well, be excellent to this creature. Show him what you're made of. Yeah. Lazel, hit it. On the anvil. Now there's a reference almost no one will get. On the anvil! <laughs> Ooh, actual speech. Wait, he really couldn't work out what to do? I mean, fine, I suppose. You know, he had an enemy right in front of him and couldn't work out how to hit it. I mean, I'm not going to complain. Well, blast it. Keep working on that big burn mark on his chest. Right. Okay, what do we got here then? Uh, that's looted, and they all run through the harmful surfaces like idiots. Um, the Diary of Lump the Enlightened, Lump's Warhorn, a, a dried pork sausage, and a warped headband of intellect. We'll look at those in a moment. Uh, hold chicken. Good God, we'll let's go sell that to the refugees. So, what have we here? Lump's Warhorn. A single horn belonging to Lump the Enlightened. The mouthpiece is crusty with chunks of dried food. Story item. You can't summon a dead ogre, it turns out. So apparently that can be used to summon him if he gives it to us. Right. right. No, don't run away from the healer. Bloody... He'd better be in range. Now, where's my... Hmm... Where is my protection? Right. There it is. Okay. So, is this a freebie now? Or do I use a spell slot? Oh, looks like it's a freebie after all. Great. So, we had other, uh, so that, warped headband of intellect. This particular circlet is covered in yellow slime and has pieces of half-digested mutton stuck in, behind the gems. Oh god, that take ages to clean. Increases the wearer's intelligence score to 18, not increases it by a few points. Um, warped, I suspect, because it's been forced onto a great big lumpy ogre's head and is all bent out of shape. But if we give this to Gale as an early item, he now has a fancy headband and makes him look like a high elf with a beard. Oh, what's that? That's his defensive duelist. Okay, I see. Um, they have a dried pork sausage, probably about as revolting as it sounds. 
Um, I mean, you'd want to, you wouldn't want it to be too dry, would you? Um, and where is the reading material? I don't think it was a letter. It looked more like. There we go. The Triumphs and Travels of Lump the Enlightened. Day one. Now that I see truth, I can scarcely remember a time before. At first I thought it took the human's thin flesh that bestowed the gift, but I've come to believe it was the circlet she wore. There was crunch in that shoe. Oh, so it's bent out of shape because he bit it. And then he noticed it. And we were like, oh, it got thing on head. Thing go on head. Stick on my head. Day four. The goblin boss, Draw Ragslin, made a tantalizing proposal. Spare any prey bearing his new god's brand and feast on the rest. He offered considerable coin in return. I see. Now here we have the old school book. Someone's diary might explain what happened here. A school's attendance log fills the ancient pages. As the pages and days progress, more and more pupils' names vanish from the entries. An in urgent script, a note in the margin states that someone has to investigate what's become of the missing children and their families. I strongly suspect it's either something to do with the goblins or Auntie Ethel. I'm strongly leaning towards Auntie Ethel. Now, what else to do here before I round up the episode? Uh, most of the other things in here are empty containers, not worth looking into. Please tell me this isn't acid as well. It looks like moss. Okay. Oh, A is for Azov and Other Gods, Volume 7. A collection of children's rhymes about the gods Lyra, Lyra, and Loviatar. Loviatar, of course, being also. Right. So, when you get to the Kalevala, Loviatar isn't necessarily Madame Luhi. But she basically is, and they may be the same character. If not, they're very similar in outlook and behaviour and things that they do. Um, and of course, so then it would be that, uh, is it Lemminkainen, goes to try to to wed the daughter of Loviatar. Um, and he takes the Sampo with him, the magic mill. And there's the whole chase when they're on the boat getting out of there. Uh, after the whole giant pike incident on the way there and, and Madame Louis comes chasing them on her boat and oh, we got this whole big, yeah, bunch of goblins up there to deal with. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good thing to go approaching next. But probably in the next episode. For now, though, I think I'm going to have to leave this one here. I hope you all enjoyed this, and I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. I'm going to say bye-bye for now, though, and cheerio!